Hi, and welcome back to Melissa's Kitchen. I am your host, Melissa, and today we are going to make some shepherd's pie. Now, there is a common misconception, especially in America, about shepherd's pie. Uh, shepherd's pie is made with lamb, traditionally, not ground beef, hence the name shepherd's pie. Frankly, have you ever seen a shepherd herding cows? Anyway, so let's get started. Beef is cottage pie. Yes, cottage pie is the beef version. Shepherd's pie is the lamb version. And that's what we're going to make today. So, I'm going to start with some butter, a little oil in the pan. There's more than that. Just using EBOO. We'll put in some onions. I'm going to start with these and get them nice and translucent. Those going. They should take a minute or two. You don't want them completely translucent because they will continue to cook as you start adding other ingredients. So I've got mashed potatoes started. That is typical in the shepherd's pie. You're going to put the lamb and vegetables mixed along the bottom and then put the mashed potatoes right on the top. So I'm going to actually drain these because they're already good and cooked up. I'll let them get nice and dry while these are going. Now this is one of these types of dishes that my kids will not eat with vegetables. So one of the tricks I've learned is to throw an onion on the floor and then I will take some pureed carrots and throw those in towards the end, mix them all really well. The kids never see it and never know it's there. And they get their serving of vegetables. If you can't or don't have the time to puree vegetables, just pick up a, a little jar of baby food. Pure carrots, just carrots and water. It's all, all you're getting. So just throw that in there and, instead of being pure puree. For some reason, I'm seeing a spot. I'm gonna get my ground lamb, about one pound, ready for when I'm ready for it. Starting to go very nicely. They're just about ready. I'm going to start adding some other ingredients. I have some ground ginger. I'm going to put my carrots in next because they are going to start cooking. And I've chopped them fresh carrots. Actually, my assistant. My lovely hubby has chopped them nice and chunky for me, and we'll get those starting to cook. So they'll get nice and tender by the time we're ready to add them to our pan. I like garlic in pretty much everything. And instead of putting big chunks in so we don't taste it, I'm just going to use a chunky garlic paste. I'll put a nice squirt of that in. I'm running a little low because obviously we use it quite often. Then I'll put a little ginger in. I get this. Going on a little bit. 
tell you it's about a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. I just want the whole thing. <laughs> They're coming along really nicely. I'm going to start pushing these around to the side so they'll start cooking a little slower so I can add my meat. Because there's a lot less fat in the ground beef that I'm used to cooking, I usually use an 80 20 mix of ground beef. I'm going to add a little Ma'am. bit. Yeah, I use an 80 20 ground beef, not less. So the lamb has a lot less fat, so I'll put a little bit more of the olive oil in so it doesn't start sticking all over. I'll get it all nice and broken up. Get all nice and brown. That's the side vegetable we're going to mix in. That's no big deal. Put it all together. Oh, at the end, it's all going to be mixed together. I use for this are some really beautiful Vidalia onions, which have a, a bit of a sweet, text, a sweet taste to it, and really fresh. Ah! I am probably one of the messiest cooks you will ever meet. Oh, the food's always good, so. A little mess. Besides, I have kids and they have chores, so <laughs> what's it end up having to clean up after me? Some cheap peas. Oh, salt and pepper. I need salt and pepper, yes. All right, we'll put that. Remedy. Salt. Excuse me while I get this. <laughs> Pepper. Better be keeping anyway. Then my stuff doesn't fly all over the place uh, as much anyway. Finish cooking meat first. Frozen peas. Mix. So frozen, there's still a piece of ice in there. That's all right, it'll melt. And this lamb is pretty near done. I'm going to add 
the gravy, which is about one and a quarter, one and a half cups of hot water with a couple beef bouillon cubes and a couple lamb bouillon, uh, chicken bouillon cubes. If they only had lamb bouillon cubes, that would make it so much easier. Pour that in, start to get it boiling and turn the heat up. So it starts cooking down. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to go. I'm going to grab my potatoes. I have a bowl. It's already already has uh, butter in it. And we got a whole potato in there. My masher. Let's start mashing the potatoes. Usually for a mashed potato, I like to use a um, bag of golden potatoes. I don't even know if I can see them. So yes, mm -hmm. um, golden potatoes make a really delicious, creamy mashed potato. These are white because I grabbed the wrong bag. But they'll still do just fine. Ah, it smells so good. A little milk in the match. It's nice and creamy. Messy, of course. a by taste kind of thing. A lot of people like whipped potato or where the potato is put through a ricer. I actually like chunky mashed potatoes. Um, which probably isn't that rare, but I think the majority of people like them really whippy or no mm. lumps whatsoever. Mm. Mm -hmm. Creamed. Creamed, yeah. Creamed mashed potatoes. Now we're almost Ready to add the last couple ingredients to this. Do a little bit more mashing. So I do like the lumpy, but I don't like it crazy lumpy. <laughs> now when you're eating mashed potatoes, when you get half a potato in your mouth, it's kind of a little weird. All right, I'm good with that. Finish off this. We have two more ingredients to add. This is a homemade mint sauce, which I don't think is actually used that often, but I think it take, makes a really, really good taste. All it is is fresh mint and malt vinegar in a mini blender. Zzz, there you have your homemade mint sauce. Right, put the whole thing in there. Just it. Here we have our Worcestershire. Mm. <laughs> and it depends on how zingy you like it and how much you put in. Can you possibly reach one of those tiny spoons? Network. And film? <laughs> yeah, and film. We have no small assistants today. They are all at their sister's house spending the night. Let me give you a little taste. Mm. That's good. It doesn't smell bad either. I think it needs a little bit more garlic. Always taste 
you figure the cooking that you're going to be eating. That way you know what it needs. You want to add a little something to it. Garlic onion. Hmm? Yes, garlic onion. When you're cooking with both garlic in and house, onion, too. at least in this house, our general rule is you put half the garlic as you put in onion. So if you put a quarter cup of onion in something, you put an eighth of a cup of garlic in. That way the garlic is not overpowering and it's still delicious. One onion, one clove. One onion, one clove. If you're using out all fresh, put a little bit more pepper in there. Yep, there's a little thickening. One of the things I use is uh, pisto, which if you're in the UK, you know exactly what it is. If you're in America, you probably don't. Um, it's an instant gravy granules. But you're missing out in America. Uh, pisto beef is pretty easy for me to find. I have a hard time finding chicken um, or any of the other ones, but it is a favorite of mine, and I always keep it in stock. If you want to find something like that, you need to go to either an English specialty store, or perhaps your local grocer has a uh, international mm. aisle. I know I've got one or two near me that have it, so I always pick up this show and usually end up having two or three little containers of it at a time. Which by Christmas they'll, they'll all be gone. <laughs> and that's sticking enough really nice right now. And we're just about done to start putting it together. It does. I'm hungry. It really good. And because everything is already cooked, when we put it into the oven, it's not going to take 10 15 minutes because everything's already cooked. And you're just putting a nice toast on the top, which is the mashed potato. This is where you have to choose. Some people add cheese. Usually I'll add cheese to the cottage pie. Um, I'm not a big lamb and cheese kind of person, so I don't bother and, and Rich doesn't like the cheese you find anyway. Kids like it with cheese, Rich doesn't, so I mean, I'll put, if I make one big one, I'll put half and half. We are looking good. So, I will start pouring gravy into my pan. I the whole meat mixture. Spread it out all across the bottom. Now, a lot of times you'll see something like this in a restaurant or maybe one of the you know, popular chef shows, they'll take their mashed potato and put it in a pastry bag and make pretty designs on top. Well, it's just me and Rich eating it, so I'm not going to bother doing that. I do want to spread out the gravy evenly in the sauce or in the bottom of the pan. Make sure I've got... Plenty everywhere of everything. And 
need one more scooper. So I just put the mashed potatoes right on top. Neat mixture. Always make sure you've made enough mashed potatoes to cover. <laughs> and I have. Spread it nice and evenly. My spatula. Don't worry about getting a little bread on top because once you've got it cooked, you take it out. At least we do. Sprinkle a bit of Worcester right on top and then dig in. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to put this in the oven. I don't have the magic of TV today. As if, as in, I don't have one already made because it's just two of us eating. So, once it's done, I will post a picture of it plated. You can see how delicious it is. Crispy peaks. Use the fork to make lines, it'll make crispy peaks. Well, on. Damn race. Put the little designs in it and the little peaks that stick out between the fork imprints will crisp up, just add a little extra texture. A little pretty design. Oh, nice potato on my finger. Very good. So, the oven is preheated to 350. All I have to do is put in the shepherd's pie. My oil has moved. It's fine, I've got plenty of room. That'll stay in for about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, depending on your oven. Mine's really good at 350, it's fairly new. Uh, so I would say probably in about 10 minutes. Um, then I'll take it out and I'll post some pictures for you guys to check out. Thanks, enjoy, and eat well.